I'm Jim Kramer, and welcome to my world. You need to get in the jail. Are going to go out of business, and he's nuts. They're nuts. They know nothing. I always like to say there's a bull market somewhere. And I promise Mad you money. Just you can't afford bit. to miss it. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Cray America. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to help you make some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate you, to coach you, and teach you. So call me at 1 800 743 CNBC. You know what four words define this market? We should be down. We should be down. That's right. It's all you hear when we make these miraculous comebacks each day, these trampolines. We did it today. Dow rising 55 points, S&P advancing 0.7% after a truly hideous, ugly morning. Think about it. Last night, China raised rates. Talk about a great reason to sell, sell, sell. Uh, J.P. Morgan boosted its loss estimates this morning for its Washington Mutual Division. Ooh, man, that was a potential bull killer if there ever were one. And the analysts didn't even care about Intel's beautiful quarter. Well, well, what else is new? They hate Intel. Isn't that the perfect setup for a sharp pullback? And given the incredible run we've had lately, a pullback sure would have made sense, right? We should have been down, but we aren't. Once again, I point out that when this market is down, even a tad, even a smidgen, buyers come in like crazy. There are definitive bids underneath, is what we call them, and the market dazzles. I can't tell you how many people I know who are looking for the big down 4 to 5% day. They keep saying, look out. That's when they're going to get in. Days like today tell me that those people may have to wait a very long time before they get that kind of nasty sell-off. And by that point, stocks will probably be a whole lot higher than they are right now. With that in mind, what's the game plan for this week? As earnings season goes into full gear, we aren't trading. We're sitting on our hands. There's simply too much information coming at us. Instead, we are going to use this time to formulate our views for certain sectors by listening to key conference calls. And boy, do we have some big ones from the banks, from the techs, major industrial, and the most important oil service company there is. All right, well, first, we celebrate and honor Martin Luther King Day. So we're closed on Monday, but we're going to get right into earnings season. On Tuesday, we have Citigroup. We have Goldman Sachs coming up. We have Wells Fargo. We have State Street Bank. We got so many. Morgan Stanley, PNC on Thursday, Bank of America on Friday, BBT. Oh, these banks, I got to tell you, cursing themselves. They are one unlucky group. You see, they have the huge disadvantage of reporting after JP Morgan wowed people this morning with the earnings equivalent of an A plus paper. And he made it look that so easy. easy. The market lapped it up. We're now going to use the Jamie Dimon curve, the bank CEO who I am sure is being just cursed today at these other banks for raising the bar so high. And I think that only Citigroup is immune to this odious comparison. And I'm going to explain that later in the show. What are we going to listen for with these other guys that we like so much from Diamond and Company? First, JP Morgan's net interest margins are stabilizing. What's that? That's what banks make on the difference between the piddling, pathetic rates they pay you for your deposits and the interest they get paid for the loans. And that's the new benchmark that I think very few can meet. Then Diamond's talking return of capital through a dividend, perhaps as soon as the second quarter. Yeah, you want all of your banks to echo that sentiment. He can do it because he's got what he calls a fortress balance sheet. And he's got declining credit losses. Again, a very tough act to follow. Now, look, under no circumstances do I want you to sell the banks if they don't measure up to the new diamond standard. I am simply looking for a better entry point for many banks. And they've had a huge run lately, especially with Bank of America, which has run a monumental 14% so far this year, far exceeding all the banks and trouncing the averages. Remember, if you want to bank on America, you got to buy Bank of America. But that doesn't mean you got to pay today's posted price. That's like paying retail. Also, keep in mind that JP Morgan's a real good bank getting great, while Bank of America is a bad bank getting good. So the comparisons we see will be deeply unkind to Bank of America. Tech, on the other hand, is very different. Tech, we got to worry about here. You know why? Because in this business, the lines have been drawn. There's Apple, which reports on Tuesday afternoon, and everything affiliated with Apple on one side, that's the good side. And then there's everybody else. 
Apple has overrun our $325 price target. And we have been reluctant to join that parade of Johnny come lately. Analysts, they're all talking now, all that chatter. I and mean, then now they're getting on board. Right now they're getting behind the stock. We've been recommending it over and over and over again for the last two years, ever since it was just above $94 on January 5th of 2009. We got a 268% gain. And you know what? We're sticking with Apple. We reiterate our Apple recommendation right now. But what happens when Apple reports? Historically, it's a very conservative company. I'd like to see them earn $6 this quarter. You can write that one down. That is what's called street high. It means I'm looking for them to earn more than any of the analysts are expecting. We'd like to hear a little chatter that they would lead you, that you could put pen to paper and say, maybe they can earn $23 this fiscal year. Again, street high. This guy's around 21, 22. Uh, and I'm make, making my forecast based on projections of 50 million iPads to be sold. Remember, iPad didn't, wasn't for sale this time last year. It was, it was, uh, you know, no one knew about it. And the possibility of additional 10 million phones coming from Verizon. Uh, but let's back up a second. If you don't own Apple yet, I caution you to wait for them to report in the hope that someone doesn't like their conservative guidance and is fooled by how conservative they are. And that's when you get your chance to buy. Google Thursday. Now, this is interesting. Google. <sighs> I know when you say this, it's going to sound kind of counterintuitive because this is $640 stock, but Google's cheap. I mean, forget the dollar amount. It's cheap. It's cheap versus its earnings. And we think it's growing. We think it's growing terrifically. And we think you should buy Google, but not with that 620 you know, See, where we went out today. I worry that you'll be spending so much capital. This stock was up nicely today. I don't want you spending $624 on the common stock. That's too risky. I would play this with deep in the money call options. I describe how that works in getting back to even. I would buy, write these down too, the February 595 calls for $38.50. That gives you a call in the quarter because they're going to report next week and a potential breakout when this, if this stock goes up six points, it's going to be broken out for the year. Uh, and it also gives you a cushion to ride out a shorter term negative reaction that may be, I think, ill informed. Options may seem risky, but in this case, my deep in the money call method is much more conservative because if Google stinks up the joint, which I don't think it will, your downside for the 624 stock is cut off at the 595 strike level. You watch options action with Melissa Lee. You will hear this strategy mentioned over and over again. It's a great primer for how to do what I'm talking about. Beyond tech and the banks, we're going to hear from Parker Hannafin, PH, on Thursday morning. This is the first of the big industrials to report. It will tell us whether the whole group has run too much. I think there's more to come because the U.S. is just beginning to kick in. And PH, one half of the Cleveland dynamic duo, the other being Eaton, are about the best performing stocks in the whole diversified manufacturing universe. Finally, Schlumberger, also known as Schlumberger, also known as Slob, because its symbol is SLB, reports on Friday. And as Schlumberger goes, so goes that whole oil service group. This call is the most important oil call out there. As a matter of fact, it's really the only one that you really got to pay attention to. Andy Gould, the CEO, he has the power to change our minds about a sector we like very much because we believe oil's going to grind higher, ever higher, to $100 this year. I, I think he won't disagree. Gould is opinionated. He's also very funny. He's wry. And he bases his opinions on his orders along with his outlook. And it's the best in the show. Don't forget to look at his glossary. He has a whole, all the terms. He's got great explanations for all of them on the left-hand side of the website. The bottom line, next week is a huge week for earnings. Remember to stop, look, and listen. But don't buy or sell until you've read not just the headlines, not just the stories, but the conference call transcripts and the analyst reports. It's just too darn hard. And you will lose too much money if you react lickety-split, even in this powerful bull market. Let's take calls. Let's go to Brian in Tennessee. Brian. Hey, Jim, how you doing? This is Brian S. Harris out of Memphis, Tennessee. Booyah! I like how fired up you are because you're at the top of the show. I, I can feed on your energy. How can I help you, sir? Uh, yes, I was calling. Um, recently, I've held AIG for a while now, and I have some options on it. And today, it took a pretty big hit. And I just wanted to get your outlook on it to know, should I continue uh, waiting for it to go back up over the next couple of weeks, or is it going to go further south? All right. Well, first of all, uh, Maria Bartiromo had uh, Ben Moshe. He's the fabulous CEO on today. And once again, I come back and just feel this guy is just so amazing. I remember after 9-11, the tragedy of 9-11, he was at MetLife. He was willing to come right on my show and say, listen, all claims we made, no one else 
else even wanted to appear on camera. That guy is money. Now, here's the problem. AIG, a lot of the government, the government's, you know, offloading its stock. It, there's been what's known as a short squeeze of people who couldn't find stock. They've been bidding it up, bidding up somewhat artificially. Ultimately, I think this, because the company has so much revenues, it can be a $60 stock or $70 stock, but let's let it come in a little more. It's under some pressure. No need to pull the trigger now. Butch in North Carolina. Butch. Jim, Happy New Year and a big Duke Blue Devil booyah from North Carolina. Holy cow, I was with Al Mulally the other day and he was telling me I didn't have a mic for it that Kansas is going to beat Duke. He's got everything on Kansas. No way. Well, let me ask, thank you, uh, Jim, for suggesting LYB the other day. I purchased some, and it has gone up nicely. Oh, uh, you're too kind to mention that one. Yeah, and I was, uh, I remember that four went bankrupt, so when it came out, it had no debt, and I knew it was, it was good to go. What's on your mind? Well, I'm calling to ask you about Pengrove Energy. I bought some, uh, oh, a couple of years ago now. And you've been talking about how oil is going to go up substantially this year. Yes, it is. They're, they're weighted about 50-50 in natural gas and crude. But I want to be with the best company. Should I get out? Uh, no, see, if you profit? want to be... Oh, this is not the best of breed. It's a decent company. It has a good yield. If you're going to stick with that particular cohort, then Prudho, uh, PBT, PBT's better. You know what, though? Let's make money in that group. It's Hess, H-E-S, going from real bad to real good. That's how you're going to make some money. Next week, stop trading. It's a huge earnings week for the banks. We got tech, we got an industrial, we got an oil service play. Hey, why don't we do this? Why don't we sit back and listen and learn and then figure out how we can make some money? That money be right back.